through that wilderness period is not nice. But the thing is, we got to go through that entire process. And I'll close off with Deuteronomy chapter 8. It says that God had led the Israelites through the wilderness. I'm just paraphrasing now. That they could learn humility and that he could see what was inside of their hearts. So humility at the end of the day is learned through the process of the wilderness. Meaning that you're going through these various challenges which develops humility inside of you. Which creates a greater dependency for you upon God. And then what happens? Humility is an absolute necessity for the promised land. And these verses are the ones that I want to... Oopsie. And I've got three minutes to share them with you. It's Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. If you want to try and find that, it's right before Numbers 14. Yesterday we, we shared a, a great pickup line for, for people that are looking to, to, to get into courting and dating and potentially marriage one day. And the pickup line is, would you guys like to hear what it is? The, the, the pickup line, my wife wouldn't appreciate this one if I had to have shared it with her when we were back, back then. But the pickup line is when, when, when a man wants to get a, a lady, he would say, for example, I've been doing my Bible study and I was in the book of Numbers, but I have not found yours there. <laughs> no. No. Terrible, eh? <laughs> anyway, so just so just some context. <laughs> Definitely not, <laughs> but it's a good icebreaker, I believe. Anyway, my opinion. But uh, so so, Rome, <laughs> so Numbers thirteen is this whole story where God had literally promised the Israelites that they are going to get this land, the land of Canaan. This is their land. God had promised them this land, which is a very fascinating thing as well. Because God promised it to Israel, not because Israel was better, not because Israel had more military prowess, not because Israel was this mighty nation. No, God g gave it to Israel. Why? Because God chose them. God chose them. Not because they were more powerful, because they were more wise, because they were more this. No, because God chose them. Now, please remember that when you do read the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, that you want to read it through the lenses of Christ. Okay, so it's a place of reference for us. Because in the New Covenant, the awesome thing is, God has chosen both Jew as well as Gentile. Okay, so we are chosen by Him. It's not one particular nation that's only chosen by God now. It is both Jew, Gentile, male, female, and circumcised, uncircumcised. All of us have now, when you give your life over to Him, you've been chosen by Him. So what's fascinating is that God promised them this land. Why? Because He chose them. So then what He told Moses to do was the leader of the day. He said that, okay, listen, I need, you're going to take 12 leaders from the 12 tribes of of, of, of Israel and then you're going to send them out to go and explore this land so here they went out these 12 leaders went out to go and explore the land of Canaan for 40 odd days or so and then we get into verse 26 here so now they come back to come and give their feedback on what they saw the report on the exploration they came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran there they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land they gave Moses this account we went into the land to which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. So there's obviously blessing there, okay? Here is its fruit. They also came back with a huge, huge fruit. So there was huge blessing. There was overflow. There was abundance. Everything that God had promised. Verse 28 says, But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live near the sea along the Jordan. Today we have what you call parasites, Okay. <laughs> so verse 30, look at this now. Then Caleb, which was one of the outstanding guys, he, then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. Yeah. So 10 out of the 12 complained about this land that God had promised them. This land was inevitably theirs. It is a guarantee that they're going to get this land. All they got to blooming do is just go to the land. But what did they tend to do? The 10 spies, not the 12, because the two, Joshua and Caleb, saw something completely different. But the 10 spies were looking with their eyes. They weren't looking at how big God actually is. God had promised them this place. God had promised them this land of milk and honey where there's abundance, there's overflow, there's provision. There's just amazing things. But yet there were some giants inside there. And my friends, I'll close off with this. That every single day, both myself as well as every one of us seated over here, we can decide. Either we can look at the giants that are in front of us, 
or we can ultimately look to the one who made us, who is Jesus Christ. We can either live a life of control, which is ultimately birthed out of fear, or we can live a life of absolute purposeful risk and adventure, which is birthed out of a place of faith. 